Now, um, we'll touch on this theme again later, but we do not have to have perfection be the enemy of good. Every little bit counts. And in this analysis by Dr. Song, uh, where they looked at 130,000 people with three and a half million person years of follow-up, they asked, if you replace just 3% of your calories from animal-based protein with 3% of calories from plant-based protein, is it good? Is it not good? Well, it turns out it's good. In this analysis, if you replaced just 3% of your calories from animal-based protein with plant-based protein, that's associated with living longer. You can see they had so much data, they could break it down by type of animal protein. And in this analysis, if you replace just 3% of your calories from processed red meat with 3% of calories from plant-based protein, you had a 34% lower hazard of death. Unprocessed red meat, 12, poultry, six, fish, and this analysis, 6%, eggs, 19, dairy, 8%. Every little bit counts. Um, and here I wanna just touch on animal, animal base, I'm stressing animal-based ketogenic low-carb diet patterns. And I think that the allure of that is based on a popular myth. And that popular myth is that in 1980 or so, they told us to eat low fat. Look at us now, we're fat and sick. That's a nice, simple narrative. That's not what happened. They may have told us to do that, but we didn't do that. We ate more of everything, including fat. So I think it's just fake news, the underpinning of that. Um, there's no long living society that lives in a state of chronic ketosis that suggests that living that way is not helpful chronically. And the Inuit population, the circumpolar population that lives in Greenland, they actually, and it's hard to, you know, predict before global warming, um, well, probably still, but it was it's hard to live up there. You know, it's hard to grow an apple tree. And they're eating a lot of fish and it's, it's easier for them to, you know, to, to have a lower carb diet because there's not a lot of carbs around. And the, uh, they actually have a mutation that makes it harder for them to go into a state of ketosis, suggesting again, that it is not helpful chronically. And the blue zones, as you all know, are five regions across the world. One of them is the Seventh-day Adventist in Loma Linda, California. They have the most centenarians of any, pop, of any group uh, in the world, five areas throughout the world. What is a common theme? Their diet is well more than 50% carbs. It's not sugar cookies, it's not cakes, it's tubers, it's beans, it's lentils. Um, it's truly whole grains. And interestingly, the Simone people from the jungles of Bolivia, they have the lowest rates of heart disease ever recorded in the medical literature. Their diet is about 72% carbs. Obviously it's multifactorial. They have a, uh, they're very physically active and uh, have a lot of psychosocial or impressive social networks, but their diet is 74% carbs, 14% uh, fat and 14% animal uh, protein. And that animal protein is, um, uh, like wild monkeys, like they catch wild monkeys. So it's a, probably a slightly healthier kind of animal protein than the typical Westerner is, is exposed to. 72% uh, 70, carbs, lowest rates of heart disease ever recorded in the medical literature. And this really cool metabolic ward study by Dr. Hall and colleagues, where they put 20 people in a metabolic ward and they had a completely controlled environment and they controlled everything they ate. Or um, are they, and so this was an ad lib feeding study and they were either fed a low carb diet or a low fat diet and they were given the food, they could eat as much or as little as they wanted. And one of the, the things about the, the animal based keto diet is to say, well, you know, you'll eat less because of you know, ketones and stuff, but at least in this randomized trial, ad lib energy intake was lower throughout 
in the low fat arm versus the low carb arm. And they looked at a, a number of secondary analyses. The LDL cholesterol fell significantly more in the low fat diet. Triglycerides fell significantly more in the low carb diet. Glucose was about the same. And CRP fell significantly more, was, was, I should say, was significantly lower in the low fat arm, the after two. And there are a variety of prospective cohort studies with a variety of different endpoints that demonstrate consuming more of an animal-based low-carb pattern, not necessarily keto, but an animal-based low-carb pattern is associated with worse outcomes. And this one by Dr. Lee published in Circulation showed that after a heart attack, people who ate more of an animal-based ketogenic diet did worse than uh, other types of dietary patterns. And there's a variety of mechanisms of harm. A um, couple I wanna point out, uh, new 5 gc is a siacilic acid that lives on cell membranes. We humans don't have it, but non-human primates have it on their cell membranes. Who cares? Well, people thought, you know, why is it that like red meat for carnivores isn't so bad, but for us seems to cause trouble. And what they, so what they did is they created, I think it's a rat, I can't remember if it's a mouse or a rat model. But they created a rat or mouse model that didn't have any new 5GC on their cells. And they fed them red meat with a new 5GC. And that new 5GC made it onto the cell membranes of these rats or mice. And they, the animals saw it as foreign and attacked it and had increased their uh, liver cancer rates by like five times and they had more inflammation. And so it's hypothesized that when we eat red meat, we can bring these siacilic acids onto our cell membranes and our bodies see it as far as promoting inflammation, et cetera. Antioxidants, berries, that, so plant-based foods in general have, have 64 times more antioxidants than animal-based foods. And berries have about uh, 90 times more antioxidants than do fish. Um, and in terms of the ketogenic uh, diet that really lacks hard outcomes. We need, there's really, we need more data and there's multiple side effects of harm, at least in the pediatric epilepsy literature, because it is indicated for refractory epilepsy. Um, and, but in those select groups, there's some trouble. Uh, there are side, indeed a number of side effects. Um, and of course, when you eat a low carb or possibly animal-based ketogenic diet, pattern or animal-based low-carb diet, you're leaving out some of the healthiest foods in the world. You're leaving out whole grains. Uh, we, we talked about that meta-analysis by Dr. Reynolds with 135 million person years of follow-up. We're eating more whole grains was associated with better outcome. You're leaving out beans and rentals, which are associated with living longer, and you're leaving out fruits. There's no long living population that's in a spate of chronic ketosis. There's no hard outcomes, we need safety data. Epi and mechanistic studies, epidemiology and mechanistic studies do not support benefits that suggest harm. A small randomized trial by Dr. Hall's group does not suggest weight loss with it. And you're giving up some of the healthier, healthiest foods in the world. Um, and let's look at different nutrient breakdowns. This is a plant-based diet versus a Mediterranean style diet versus an animal-based, animal-based low carb diet. And the plant-based diet is equal parts tomato, spinach, lima beans, peas, and potatoes. The Mediterranean diet is about 40% plant-based of the plant-based diet and a half a piece of skinless chicken, one teaspoon of olive oil, and one cup of 1% milk. And the animal-based low-carb arm is equal parts beef, pork, chicken, and whole milk. Let's look at the cholesterol. You don't need to eat a drop. Your body makes all you need. How about fat? Uh, much lower in plant-based protein. Oh my God, my muscles are gonna go away. Uh, you'll get all the protein you need, meeting your caloric needs on a plant-based diet. And you don't have to take my word for it. You could take Patrick Laboumian's word for it. He's quite literally the world's strongest man and he's vegan. 
how do I know that he's the world's strongest man? Well, I know that because he won the world's strongest man contest. That's how I know. And beta carotene, it's subtle, dietary fiber, using the microbiome, it's subtle, your constipation will go away. Calcium, magnesium, it stacks up in a friendly way for a plant-based diet. Right, circling back to our guy. This is the guy, the six-year-old person who had a positive stress test uh, and chest pain with a little bit of activity. And he went plant-based and he didn't want to take medications, which was his choice. You can see he lost weight, blood pressure fell. This is after, I think, three months. I can't see the slide up top here. LDL cholesterol fell like 70 points. He could walk a mile and it stopped because he get chest pain. Fast forward about a year. Blood pressure is good. His cholesterol is good. He can jog about two miles and stop because of discomfort. And I bumped into him like four or five years ago, and the guy jogs four miles now, and he stops because he gets bored. And the um, we had a couple other cases that we just very recently published. I don't have a slide of it in the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention, the journal that Dr. Kim Williams is the editor in chief of. And it was a, a couple of cases of microvascular angina, previously called syndrome X. And sometimes people will get angina discomfort without a major blockage in the blood vessels, the three big blood vessels that feed the heart with blood. But there's tons of itty bitty, teeny weeny little streams, miles and miles of them, miles and miles of teeny itty bitty little weeny streams that also feed all the heart, mu all the muscles throughout the heart. We don't see that on catheterization. You can get a sense of it if the, if the blood flows slowly through the heart, you can get a sense that the micro blood vessels are not doing well. Um, if it flows fast, you can think they are doing well. So there are ways we could assess, get a guesstimate of how they're doing. Um, anyway, we had a couple of patients who had microvascular angina, no obstructive coronary disease, but angina symptoms. And you can look at the case if you're interested, it's in this month's um, uh, uh, edition and of the journal and, Dr. and Kathleen Allen, a medical student at Dartmouth uh, Geisel School of Medicine is the first author of our, our two cases. And basically a plant-based diet um, resolved their symptoms. And, you know, for the first patient had many, had tried multiple other things and nothing helped. And we were fortunate that a plant-based diet was able to turn her symptoms around and she went from not, she used to play doubles tennis all the time and then couldn't, and then went back to playing doubles tennis and uh, is very happy. So we're very pleased about that. And I wanted to bring that up because there's really not a lot of good therapy for microvascular angina now. It's a, it's a, it's a increasingly understood area. I mean, it's been known about for a long time, but it's been getting, it's kind of having its moment, fortunately in the sun more now because it needs a lot of work done with it. Uh, and uh, we were pleased to be able to contribute to the conversation in regard to diet change and a potential impact on microvascular angina.